And we knew we were going to have to tackle that on three fronts, legal, political, and public relations. And I think one of the great things for me is I work in an organization where comms does get to have a seat at the table. And that's really important for us. And if you need to use this as an example of why you need to have a seat at the table, I would encourage you to do so. Because um, I could not have been effective at my job if I wasn't aware of what was also happening on the legal and political front. Um, because we had to do a lot of if-then scenarios. There were so many drafts of statements that if we go this way, if he goes this way, we're going to say this. If he goes this way, we're going to say this. And so really just being prepared for every possible angle. And our legal team would tell me, we're going to send a letter to Lance next and his legal team next week. Here's what the letter's going to say. Here's when you're going to want to be prepared. Because the second we would send him any information or his lawyer any information, there would be a news story about it because they were just putting it out to the media to get their spin, particularly because they knew we couldn't, under our rules, talk about the specifics of the case, which was unfortunate because it gave him sort of a platform to say whatever he wanted to say and do without a lot of room for us to rebut that. So what we knew is that having done all the research on what he does, when you can't attack the truth, you're going to attack the people in the process. So we knew we needed to be really buttoned up internally and to be prepared for what is the process, we're sticking with the process, how can we communicate about the process without it just being boring, boring, boring. Um, and so that's, we had to really be prepared for that. And we also had to prepare our staff for the fact that we were all going to be, to some extent, a little bit under attack. And fortunately, he stuck mostly with attacking our CEO which I say that fortunately, which sounds terrible, but more because he was prepared for that and you know, he's like, that's part of my job. And he, for the most part, our staff was able to stay a little bit under the radar. Myself, not as much, but for other people. We knew he was gonna use all of the connections that he had, both politically, um, celebrity, any of those ways, media relationships to push his side of the story out. Um, this was a, a really particularly interesting case for us because we typically deal with athletes that are, you know, and that's, their, it's about their sporting career. But in this case, because of the Livestrong angle, there was a whole section of the community that had no care about him as an athlete, but cared about him as a cancer advocate. And so that was really hard for us because we were not, at that point in time, concerned about, um, we weren't trying to go after Livestrong, we weren't trying to go after the cancer charity, we weren't, that was not our issue. We were dealing with him in, in the athlete case, but unfortunately, given his choices, there was bleed over into the organization. And so we had to be really careful about how that process worked. The other piece was this is an international story. It wasn't just gonna be a US athlete. This was huge, huge, huge news in Europe, probably even to some extent more so than here in countries like France um, and, and England, all of those places that have huge cycling communities, Belgium, um, it was a very, very big piece. And transparency was key. We try to be really, really, really transparent as an organization to the best that we can. And so our, our guidance from our CEO, and I think is a big part of our communications plan, is what can we talk about? And when we can talk about it, let's talk about it. Let's put the information out there. How can we make um, as much of it public as we can? How can we engage with the public when they reach out to us? 